Hi everyone, in this video today, we'll be talking about how to add a new column in an existing data frame in R, which uh, I mean, and in that data frame, we can you know, get into R by using read.csp as shown in the previous video. Uh, you can follow the card on the top right corner if you haven't seen that video yet. And once the data set is in the R Studio, we can add new columns or process the already present columns into new ones to make our analyses or you know, to, uh, to identify trends moving further. So to do this exercise, first we'll have to use a data frame. Now, rather than using the read.csv to add and you know, find a new data frame, I just created one data frame using the command on the screen and I'll just quickly run it. But before that, as you know, as a habit, we should clean the console and the environment. Now to clean the environment, we already see that there is some data set, something you know, already in the environment, there's some values A and B, and the console is also not clean. So to clear the console, we'll press Control plus L. Console is clean. And to clear the environment, we'll uh, run this command rm list is equal to ls. And you'll see that the environment is empty. Uh, there's a video on this command rm list is equal to ls as well. It's also on the card on the right hand side top right. Uh, please click if you haven't seen that video too. So now coming to the data frame, let's run the data frame command, which is selected on the screen. And now you see we have a data frame created. I'll just quickly view this data frame and you can see that, okay, it's a data for 10 students, like 10 students IDs and the marks are for English, maths, physics, and chemistry, right? So we have four marks out of 100 for all uh, students, four, I mean, four subject marks for 10 students out of 100. And now we need to add new columns. Uh, to see, you know, what's going on. So if, if you would remember in your school, you used to calculate EPCM percentage or PCM percentage, uh, you know, in, in your plus one or plus two to see how well you are faring among all the subjects. So we'll do something on something similar here as well. So first one is to create a column for overall score for students. Now for overall students, what we need to do we uh, write the data frame, data frame is df1, and we'll add a dollar sign to it. Now, when, whenever you add, add a dollar sign, you see uh, R Studio gives you an option for the five columns that are in the data frame. So this is how you append a column. But I want a new column. I, I don't want anything existing from here. So what I'll write is I'll write overall, right? I'll write overall, and I'll and I need to just add all the, score, I need to uh, you know, sum up the scores of English, maths, physics, and chemistry, right? So I'll just do again, DF1, append English plus DF1, append maths plus DF1, append physics plus DF1, append, oh, sorry, it's append chemistry. So now when I run this command, you see that the command is run on the console and now this data set has six variables and not five. So we go to the data set again, you see a new column here has popped up, which is you know uh, overall and it's very easy to see, right? Uh, and you can even check it you know, uh, if, the, if the sum is working fine or not. So this is how you add a column. Now coming back, don't you think that this is a bit problematic if you have like 10 columns or 20 columns and you have to add, right? You'll just keep typing, you know, uh, the, the data set, the dollar sign and then appending it. So if there are four or five columns or three to four columns, this method works completely fine. You can completely follow it. There's no problem. But if you want to make it a little bit easier, make the command a bit shorter, there is a function called row sums, which now I'll be using to show how can we get the same answer by using row sums. And I'll uh, you know, call it a, a different column to show you that I'll get the same answer. So I'll do DF1 uh, dollar sign. It will be overall two, right? Overall underscore two. And what I'll do is I'll use row sums. And now in row sums, I'll just add the data set. In that data set, I'll select columns two to five. Right, and when I run this command, you see it's run here again. And when I go to the data set again, I have an overall two command run, which has exact same values as the first column, right? Now, what is this uh, command doing and how is it working? Again, 
just like we talked about in the previous video, if you have any doubt about the function, type a, a question mark in the console and just type the name of the function, right? And then press enter. You can see that what happens here and you can just follow the arguments and details of the function and you'll be easily and you'll easily know what's happening in this command. To give a small insight, I'm just, you know, adding a data frame and whenever square brackets open up, it has row into columns. So just, I'll just help, uh, you know, show how it goes. So whenever you have a data frame, right? And you have square brackets is generally row comma columns. So like if, if, if I would have written DF1, two comma five, it will be second row, fifth column. And second row, fifth column is, uh, if you closely see second row, fifth column is this one, two, three, four, five. Is chemistry. Second row, fifth column is 99, right? So we would have gotten this answer. So this is just a way to show like what we want to do. So whenever we use C function, this is a combined function. And I'll just go back. So the C function just said, just tells that combine columns two through five and two through five are two is English, three is maths, four is physics, five is chemistry. And that's how the row sum function works, right? So now let's move ahead. Now I want to just calculate the PCM score. By PCM, I mean physics, chemistry, and maths, like these three highlighted on the screen. I want to remove English, right? So let's just use row sums again for practice six to see how will it work, right? So it will be DF1 underscore PCM is equal to again row sums. And now DF1 square brackets open, comma, columns. I'll open the brackets. Now PCM was three to five, right? Because English was column number two. So we just remove column number two. And the moment I run this, it, it's run in the console. We can go check back in the data set. This is my PCM score. It's 264 for the first, for the first student and uh, uh, 257 for the ninth student, right? So this is how you just use row sums to just sum whatever you want to do in every row for every student. Now, this was just absolute numbers. Can we add a column for percentages as well? Let's try that. So I have the overall score. Overall score is 350. Now, maximum scores that could have been obtained by the student was 400. So the percentage would be 350 by 400, right? So let's just create a percentage overall column. So it will be like DF1. I'll name it percent underscore overall, right? And here I'll do df1 overall divided by 400 into 100. This should give me the percentage. So yeah, I get the percentage scores for all the 10 students here. And then if I want to just get the PCM percentages, not I, I want to remove English from the calculation to see, okay, maybe some students perform better with English and some students perform better in only the PCM, the, the core science subjects. So what to do there? So here I'll just do a very similar process. Dollar sign percent underscore PCM. This will be equal to brackets open, DF1 PCM, PCM divided by 300 into 100, right? So we'll run this and we'll see what happens. We'll go to the data set and boom, we have the percentages for PCM and percent overall, right? And now we can clearly see, okay, like some students have a, a lower overall percentage, but a higher PCM score. Some students have a higher PCM score, sorry, a lower PCM score and a higher uh, percentage. So this is how you just, you can analyze data by adding new columns and you can uh, use our console to you know just uh, add processed columns which help you derive insights by using different metrics and processing the data in whichever way you want to imagine mm -hmm.